Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Secretary. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, I know you're a big celebrant of it, so uh, I, I, uh, I want to start off by commending you, uh, Mr. Secretary, for acting quickly to extend the public comment period on uh, President Bush's uh, administration's hastily constructed 2010-2015 year OCS oil and gas leasing program, and I look forward uh, to joining you in, in New Jersey when you come to hear from people along the New Jersey shore about what drilling off the outer continental shelf would mean to them uh, <clears throat> in their lives, uh, in the economy of the state, uh, and in coastal states like New Jersey. So we appreciate that you're, you're going to be there. Uh, while we now have more time to consider uh, that plan, we're still dealing with the current five-year plan for the outer continental shelf. That plan allows, for example, for a special lease sale off the coast of Virginia. Uh, the proposed site uh, may be off the coast, coast of Virginia, but as we know, uh, the ocean does not respect state borders, and any spill caused by a hurricane or an accident is likely to wash up in New Jersey less than 100 miles away. As I have mentioned in many previous hearings when you were a member of, of this committee, uh, if drilling were to begin in the Atlantic, and New Jersey could suffer uh, extreme economic consequences even when a minor spill or leak occurs. Uh, in the late 80s, medical waste uh, washed ashore on several of our beaches, and it was quickly contained and cleaned up. But 22% uh, of all of the tourism to the shore that year dropped just from that one incident, and that resulting in about the loss of $800 million dollars. Uh, so I don't want to imagine what an oil spill could do. And I know that everybody talks about how uh, the new technology is such that that's unlikely. Well, if you look at the pictures that I've exhibited on the Senate floor from the U.S. Coast Guard uh, about the oil spills that took place in the Gulf as a result of the hurricanes, we know that there, it is not foolproof by any stretch of the imagination. Um, Secondly, I, I want to introduce into the record, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, an article from the New York Times dated March 15, uh, 2009. Uh, the New York Times reported just two days ago that the number of oil and gas rigs set up to drill for new energy supplies has plummeted to less than half of what existed last summer, from 2,400 to less than 1,200 today. Uh, if oil and gas companies are not using the leases they have now, I'd like to know why they need more leases in environmentally and economically sure, sure. sensitive areas. And so I, I'd ask consent to have that included in the record, Mr. Chairman. It will uh, be included. Uh, also, um, you know, uh, um, let me get to one or two questions, Mr. Secretary. Uh, I see uh, the fact that you took this job, and you often talked about the energy moonshot uh, as one of the things you hope to be able to achieve, and I think that is desirable. Uh, you know, the Energy Information Agency estimates that the United States has approximately 3 percent of the world's proven oil and natural gas results. Given that fact, and considering it takes an estimated 8 to 20, 12 years to develop a new oil or gas field offshore, does it really make sense? to open areas where there is no existing oil and gas infrastructure. Uh, if we're taking that energy moonshot, it seems to me we'd be better focused on the developing the renewable energy sources uh, that we want. That's question number one. Question number two, it's clear that the level of scientific knowledge needed to proceed with rational decisions about uh, the planned OCS leasing on the Atlantic coast, in my view, are sorely lacking. How does your agency propose to manage to catch up with these glaring data gaps with respect to economically important fisheries, coastal economic and ecological conflicts, undersea biological, uh, the type of data information necessary in making a decision? And so my question is, would you support a plan that uh, would ensure that the National Research Council of the National Academy of Sciences would provide studies to the department before they made a determination, better understanding the potential impacts of drilling on ocean and coastal ecosystems. And finally, uh, you know, my understanding is that the department's five-year OCS drilling plan does not consider the potential economic impact on a state's uh, tourism industry, for example, or its fishing industry. Uh, and so 
If that's the case, why wouldn't the federal government evaluate incompatible uses of land or water the same way, for example, uh, that we would do in other uh, zoning determinations? Those are some of the policy questions I'd, I'd like to see the department think about, and I'd like to get your initial reactions to some of those. Thank you uh, very much, Senator Menendez. Uh, let me uh, first say thank you for um, being a part of uh, making a statement that the Department of Interior really is more than just the Department of the West, uh, because as uh, you indicated when uh, you led the effort to take us to the Statute of Liberty and to Ellis Island, there are important uh, functions of this department that uh, touch on every state, including uh, all the national icons of, uh, of this great country. So I thank you for, uh, for your efforts um, in, that, in, in that regard. Uh, let me uh, try to respond to a couple of, of your, your questions. Uh, with respect to the OCS and uh, development along the Atlantic, which I know has been a near and dear issue to your heart from uh, the first day that I met you, uh, it is uh, an issue that uh, requires, I think, the, uh, the putting together of the scientific and knowledge foundation uh, for us to be able to make rational decisions uh, going forward. Uh, the fact is that when you look at the Atlantic, um, most of the information with respect to oil and gas is uh, at least 25 years old. So sometimes we end up fighting uh, about something where we really don't have the knowledge base to even be engaged in the fight. So I'm expecting that this report from uh, MMS and USGS will uh, give us um, an overview of the information that we do have. And as importantly, what it should do is to give us uh, the uh, knowledge about the information that we do not have. And uh, so I'm look, looking very much forward to that report. Now, I do not expect the report to be um, uh, in 45 days to be as comprehensive as uh, perhaps you and, and others might want it to be. Uh, but it will be the beginning of uh, the discussion of uh, some of the issues which, uh, which, which you raise. Uh, I do think that uh, one of the things that's important as we move forward with uh, putting together a plan on uh, this very important national asset, 1.75 billion acres of land in the, uh, or of acres out in the Outer Continental Shelf, um, that we make sure that we are listening to the stakeholders. And indeed, that was part of the problem that I had with uh, Secretary uh, Kempthorne's order, uh, notwithstanding the fact that uh, I have great respect for him uh, as a person, uh, I did not feel that there had been appropriate opportunity for uh, the stakeholders to comment on uh, uh, a reopening up of the uh, five-year plan for um, uh, the OCS. And so our time now and our time in the months ahead will be spent uh, hearing from people like you as well as others who are concerned about the future of the OCS so that we can make uh, 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 rational decisions on, on how to move forward. Uh, let me uh, uh, indicate